2019 season wasn't quite what we expected uh, from the start and, and all the uh, behind the scenes work that happened over the, over the, um, over the Christmas period of, and the new direction the club was going in. But we can take great positives from that season because we had new players coming in, outstanding performances, the team's moving forward. It's a huge, uh, very exciting time for West Chilterton and Faken Cricket Club with the second ground being there, uh, the junior section going from strength to strength and coming through. I'm pretty happy with the way that we've um, we've started and, and what we're going to be doing in the next few years. So um, watch this space for, for updates and the coaching and, and the off-season stuff that we've got planned coming up is, is exceptionally exciting as well. So um, thanks very much for all being a part of that and making my job exceptionally difficult uh, by having to select all of you to, to come up and represent the first eleven. So the Slam was a very interesting competition this year. For, the, for quite a long time, you know, when COVID first hit, we worried that there would be no Slam cricket at all. Um, the club was really excited when we entered a team. And, you know, we were, all, we were all concerned that what we were looking forward to, we not, might not get. Sussex did a great job. Uh, Sussex Cricket did a great job um, towards the middle of the summer when they realised some cricket could be played. All the clubs that entered the Slam, you know, they played in the spirit of the game. Unfortunately, we had a team drop out of our group which meant there was only uh, three. But what was really nice was that Sussex organised a couple of midweek friendlies for another, for another group that only had three teams. And the, you know, the opposition we played were willing to travel from Brighton. And it really showed the inclusive spirit of the tournament. We fielded the sides that we expected to field. It was great to get some players back, um, some old players that haven't played for a while, some of the younger players who maybe don't get to play on Saturdays or Sundays. Um, it was great to get them involved play and we had some good results. You know, I'm a game down at Southwater where we, uh, they beat us quite convincingly the first time but to come back with a, a strong side and win with maybe one or two balls to spare really showed the, the commitment everyone had to playing some midweek cricket. It, the youngsters, you know, um, people like Charlie Tier, who came in, played the way they did, it was great to see him um, sort of flourishing as a talent so um, that was certainly one of them. And then we also, just anyone that played in the Southwater game really, you know, the commitment from all the guys. Uh, so there was a couple of lowlights in that game, but to still turn it round and turn, you know, turn that into a victory just showed how, how willing everyone was to you know, take the game right to the last. Was it the year that I'd expected? Well, it certainly wasn't quite what I'd hoped for. And what happened? Well, as the ECB video so poignantly put it, the lights went out and we waited, and we waited, and we waited, but we finally got back down to the nets, plus some one-to-one -one sessions with our top-notch coaches, and they are top-notch coaches. And then when St. James Montefiore, the women's team who we partnered with in previous years, suggested setting up some friendly 35 over games, we jumped at the chance. Uh, standout performances, not fair to pick on any one person. Everybody performed so well with bats and ball. It showed that even despite the lockdown, the players really had come on this season. And the key moments were all in field. You know, I honestly don't think we dropped a single catching opportunity. But what next? Well, we didn't just sit and do nothing. Instead, we put together a little task force, not to sulk about what wasn't happening this year, but about what will happen in the future. We're building an ambitious five-year plan for the women's and girls' teams. Our simple motto is to offer the maximum amount of cricket to the maximum number of women. All forms of cricket, all ages and all levels of experience. From the very youngest girls to that lost generation of women who never had the chance to play when they were at school. And from the recreational cricketer to those who strive to play at the highest level. So yeah, Sadly, we've had to wait, and we'll still have to wait until next season. But we know that this girl can, and this girl will. Training this year went very well. Uh, my first year at the club as a coach, and I found that I was very surprised with how young the 
the, the team was and, and then the club, but also very excited uh, of how many young players there were. With obviously the tricky situation with COVID, uh, the club put together a, a plan to get us back up and training as soon as possible with all the correct procedures. And I found that we got more players than probably what was expected, which is brilliant. The amount of you know, young adults playing, the amount of older guys coming back to train it is really good signs for the club and um, it, it went very, very well. The high points for me this year were seeing so many people play cricket. On Saturdays we managed to field four teams and on Sundays we managed to field two teams, which is a remarkable effort. What was really, really pleasing was seeing so many young players play over the four teams, especially in the first team. We had an average age of sort of 16 to 18, but that filtered all the way down through the different various age groups. Mixed in with some experience, I feel the club is in a very, very good position moving forward. Um, and they were the, the highs, the highs of seeing younger players come in and do well. And they're going to be the backbone of the club moving forward. Uh, so I'm very, very excited um, over the next few years to be involved with the club. If you asked me at the start of the year in the August Cup that if all three adult teams were going to get to the semi-final and one team to a final, then I would have bitten your hand off for it. It puts the club in a very strong position. Um, but, you know, not only that, I f also feel that there are a number of other performances lower down in the thirds and fourths from sort of 13, 14 year old players that, 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 that will start to play second and first team cricket over the next three, four years. But in all the clubs in a very strong position and I'm very much looking forward to working with everyone within the club and developing this club moving forward. Personally, I don't think anybody um, expected the year we had, but under the current circumstances, I think it's been extremely successful and very productive for us, um, especially in the second team, managing to reach the final of what was set up as an August Cup. Um, the format was interesting. It was a, a cup format, which is something we're not used to. Uh, we managed to play seven competitive games, one which was a final at Preston Nomads. Um, we won six of those, um, and unfortunately narrowly lost in the final, but it was a fantastic team effort. Personally, the high points for me um, have to be the, the team success getting to the final um, in what was a you know unusual season. Um, I think from a, a team aspect, we've exceeded the expectations um, in, in the second team, and it was a fantastic, well-round performance. Standout performances, um, two points as a team, has to be the uh, the semi-final against Easter Gate where we won by nine wickets. Um, it's a fantastic team performance. Everybody chipped in um, and it was just great to see the progression throughout the season from quite a lot of the youngsters. But on an individual performance, so there was a couple that, you know, a couple of big scores. Um, but for me, young Charlie Woodage at the age of 15, hitting his first adult 100 in a competitive game was incredible uh, against here, against Goring, was, was fantastic. Um, in terms of best game, I think there was a number of fantastic performances from the team. Uh, Rustington away, where we um, looked like we were on the cusp of losing and, and managed to snatch it from the jaws of defeat. Um, but yeah, I think the semi-final again, which I've already touched on, was, was fantastic in terms of everybody chipping in and a, a brilliantly well-rounded performance. This year's season was obviously uh, short and sweet. Um, however, uh, most age groups managed to get in lots of friendlies and uh, the SJCF was a success. Um, so all in all, the season was pretty positive. Um, most of the junior ages uh, had as many games as if they were playing league cricket. Although the season was short this year, there were some very good achievements, both personally and for the club. Um, on a club basis, that was really the, the number of uh, people we had in the Sussex pathway, which was nearly 40. On personal achievements, there were some uh, great performances in the SJCF and also in our adult uh, league ranks. Um, in all four adult teams, each of the teams were heavily supported by our junior section. Looking forward to 2021, there is a real hunger uh, still for cricket within the club. Our winter training programme starts actually next Thursday, uh, which is a 10-week uh, pre-Christmas training with Matt Machen. Um, I know that all of the boys and girls involved in that are looking forward to that immensely. I 
captain of the thirds for the last uh, couple of seasons. Um, and this year we, we won our August Cup, which was fantastic, um, the league rather, and then went through to the final. Didn't uh, win the final against Slimfold, which was unfortunate, but um, overall, really good season. We had uh, some, f some fantastic uh, player development. I think uh, traditionally the third 11 has been a, a side made up of um, some, some senior adults and lots of youth development coming through for the, for the future. But this year we were blessed with more seniors as many of our youth players seem to progress to the, the ones and twos. So uh, the side was, uh, had a great deal of experience, lots of ones and twos players coming back down to the threes, which put us in a very strong position. Um, we saw quite a few um, players progress very well. We saw uh, Jack Shaw develop his bowling and take some outstanding wickets, became one of our most valuable players towards the end. Um, ben Van Nort, his batting and his bowling was, uh, was outstanding and certainly working his way up through the club at the moment. Yeah, next season, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll see more of the same. We've got uh, some very strong juniors coming through from the under 14s and 13s who hopefully will progress up to uh, the third 11 ranks in the senior teams and, and maybe even higher. The season we've had has been quite extraordinary um, considering um, where we were, we were in May um, it's quite remarkable that we have played the cricket we've played. There have been a lot of people involved in getting the season going and the one thing that stands out for me this year has been the sheer determination, enthusiasm, the uh, total commitment of a great number of people in this club to uh, produce the season we've now had. I would just like to mention a few of their, their names. The groundsmen, obviously, as soon as there was a rumour that cricket would be played this year, uh, they were cutting grass, rolling, as though their lives depend upon it. Obviously, Jim, Sam, Sean, Alan and Jack down here were, were superb. But then the captains and the selectors, when the season got going, and of course, the club coaches, um, the junior coaches, the administrators, uh, they really set to and got the, the kids going and working within the controls and the regulations and the guidelines that we had to implement, devised and schemed ways to make sure that the uh, practice sessions were compliant and the games went ahead. Um, it was fantastic to see and that to me was the highlight of the season. In terms of achievement this year, I think it's been a pretty impressive year. Um, obviously the senior teams have done fantastically well, uh, each one getting to the semi-finals of their respective cups um, and one then got to the final but sadly lost in that. Um, the integration of the juniors or well, the Colts coming through into the senior teams has also been very impressive. And for that, I have to thank uh, our new club coach, I think, in the main, and our first team and our captains. Uh, Matt Machen has joined the club and has done a fantastic job. And to be honest, if there's anything positive out of this year, I think one of the big positives would be that Matt has got to know a lot more people than he would ever have done in a normal season. Um, very early on, he engaged with one-to-one uh, -one sessions and very well organised senior coaching on Thursday evenings, the implementation of the um, controlled net practices, I think was, is something that we may take forward for future years. Um, it proved very successful and Matt certainly got to know the club and the, the, the members um, much better than he would have done, I think, in a normal season. I would like to finally say that the club has always prided itself on being a friendly village club and um, together with strength shown through its members this year, I think this year particularly has exemplified and highlighted how we, when, when our things aren't quite normal, we can pull together and through all the volunteers and, and all the people that work at the club, we have produced a, a season and end up with a season that I think we can all be um, proud of. Thank you. <laughs>